I had a friend who worked uh, with mentally handicapped people. And she was a carer in a house, an ordinary suburban house, where five of these people lived. And I got into the habit of going along there to be with my friend and in that way got to know these five people. They were all lost in slightly different ways, but most of them didn't talk at all. Some of them grunted. Uh, but one of them I got particularly interested in. He was a fellow in his late twenties, I suppose, with staring eyes and misformed ears. And he used to stare into my eyes and he was trying so hard to communicate something to me. And I want, wanted to have this communication, but we couldn't get through just a few grunts and both getting more and more frustrated. So I visited him for quite a while. And then I decided I'd, I'd write a book based on it, and I called it Crate, The Fall. The crate part, he explains, uh, that I talk mostly through his voice, I get inside his head and tell his story. And he says, My newborn body was found in a wooden crate at the markets. So I was described as the baby in the crate, and the crate baby. And after a while in the institution, I became known simply as Crate. But of course, when they uh, wrote his name down, it got written down with a K, Crate. And he says, I'm sure they had no idea that the word Crate and Crater were alchemists' words. They had no knowledge of alchemists, very little knowledge of human beings. And Crate, of course, has a lot of knowledge. And I trace him backwards and forwards through the early days when the fool was a very important person. Every king had a fool. He was given license to say things, to tell the truth that uh, the other people in the court would be too afraid to say. Who is his crate? And then I, he, he's seen in different, different forms through the ages as the, uh, as the, as the clown at the circus. Uh, at one stage, I even have him seen as the psychiatrist. And there are interlinking bits between all these various roles he plays, which show that the, the person to one side is considered uh, not normal, is often the one with the knowledge who can see it all and see what's going on. When it gets uh, into the present day and Crate decides to run away from the house and everyone's looking for him and the police is just another nutter, another another one of those, I don't know why they don't keep them locked up better and so on, but his carer, the woman, goes out looking for him, wanting him to find him before the police or anybody else does, and before Crate does something dangerous. And when she finds him, she finds him staying in a house where there's a lot of uh, unusual equipment allows one to see into the future, to time travel. And he, of course, Crate is a time traveller because we've seen him in the past. We've seen him in, uh, in the world of the Sufis. We've seen him in lots of different places because we've been seeing through his eyes what he is. We've seen him as the fool, the card in the tarot pack, who, of course, uh, if you study tarot, the fool is far from foolish. And at last the carer and her care, Crate, begin to see each other as they are and talk to each other. But they begin to travel off into time and no one can really find them.